Hey, welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. Sometimes you just can't help but love the classics. And uh, in this case, uh, the classics for me is an old uh, goodie, uh, but also uh, one of the, I would say, uh, most surprising games that I didn't expect to enjoy. And that was Crash Bandicoot right here on the Sony PlayStation. And this is the remastered edition and this takes me back <laughs> to seeing this for the first time and experiencing it and now that's i'm seeing it now remastered it is unbelievable how far technology has come because back then in the original crash bandicoot at the time that it was released by none other than naughty dog the graphics were simply amazing and it really showed the power uh, that the sony playstation was offering and in this case, this just takes it to a whole nother level. You know, if you had like a time machine and you were to go back uh, with this version of Crash Bandicoot and then show this to your younger self, you'd probably be, you'd probably think you were from a different dimension or something. You'd probably think you were Crash Bandicoot. Look at how awesome that looks. All the animation, the fur, wow. It looks like a cartoon. That's how good the animation looks. And I remember playing Crash Bandicoot 1 and 2. I don't think I've ever played Crash Bandicoot 3 because I kind of think after that point it it lost uh, whatever it had originally. Wow, this looks simply amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Look at this. Okay. I haven't played this in a while, but... Uh, it should be pretty easy. Uh, that's another great thing about the way the game was designed. It's very easy to pick up. And the humor is just insane. And Crash was a great mascot, you know, especially when they were fighting against Nintendo pretty heavily because I think at the time the Nintendo 64 was released and Crash Bandicoot was a really edgy, uh, you know, smart aleck type of character. Um, even more so than Sonic the Hedgehog, you know, because he represented something, uh, I guess, different, you know. And at the same time, he had a great sense of humor. Uh, that's what I liked about him. He's constantly uh, taunting Mario. And I don't think he did much with uh, Sega, uh, because I think by that point, they, they were already losing the battle because they had released the Sega Saturn uh, so much earlier. And in a big surprise move. And so, oh, they didn't quite have the catalog of games uh, that the Sony PlayStation had. Uh, definitely, definitely not. Okay. Wow, I just fell into that hole. Man, I'm absolutely amazed by these graphics. I really am. I got to give a big hats off to the development team who did this because this looks stunning. Animations on point. All right, man, I love these lush scenery right here. Oh well, well, wow! I didn't even know that was there. Wow. All right, <laughs> I gotta remember that. Maybe I'll go a different direction this time. It looks almost like they're CG characters, mini CG characters. That's how good it looks. And I do not know who did this port, or actually, it's not even a port. It's a remake. So, wow, I hope they make more of these remakes. All right. And I did, honestly, I enjoyed Crash Bandicoot 2 a lot, but there's just something about part one that, you know, you really can't reproduce, you know, even though Crash Bandicoot was better in almost every way than the first one, part two just had that whole novelty, just, Meeting Crash for the first time, experiencing everything, seeing these absolutely incredible graphics, and just having a good time. And the feeling's almost the same right now as I'm playing this. It's, it is so cool. Okay. So what's happening here? And I don't remember if these, uh, I guess these little cutscenes were there in the original, because um, I don't have the original. So... I don't remember. Who knows, they might have added some additional things to this remake. 
and I wouldn't be surprised. Okay, the, no, okay, I thought I started over. So what's happening here? Okay, that's gonna blow up. Let's see. Wow, okay, <laughs> that looked really cool. Although uh, I got hurt for that. Oh man. And I don't even remember if I ever passed part one. I'm pretty sure I did, because I played it a lot. But I don't, I'm pretty sure I didn't pass part two. Uh, I don't know what it was. Because I don't remember too much at all about part two. Oh no, <laughs> wow, oh, yeah, that looks cool. Well, even when you die, you look cool. All right, so let's try this again. I just want to get to the first boss. Uh, to, just to see how it looks, because the rest of the game's got to be pretty cool. If the first level looks this great. All right. <laughs> AI wasn't a big thing back then. No. You... Okay, so. Whoa. Cool. Okay, so I think this is where last time I became an angel. Okay, so what's up here? Is there anything up here? Nope. That's one thing about Crash, as far as I remember, there's not anywhere near as many secrets as there are in the Mario game. And I really don't think that's the point. This one's more about just keep moving forward. There's a checkpoint. All right. So, where'd I go? Well, oh, I just smashed all this. Okay, great. And the lighting and everything is just incredible. Oh, man. Wow, it's so awesome to see how far we've come in terms of graphics. Just unbelievable. Oh, okay, that was a gamble. I don't, I don't know how I would get that without getting hit. Okay. <laughs> Every time I see that plant, I think of a Little Shop of Horrors movie with Rick Moranis, and which itself was a remake. Okay, so. Where'd I go now? Is this like a bonus stage? Yes. All right. Side scrolling time. Fantastic. Okay. Oh man, I gotta rescue my girlfriend. Let's do this. Okay, jungle rollers. More jungle rollers. Okay. And you could kind of see in a lot of ways, uh, Naughty Dog, you know, where they got a lot of inspiration to, you know, do Uncharted because this reminds me a lot of Uncharted, <laughs> to be honest with you. This, some of the elements, let's just say that. The jungle levels, the amazing graphics. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of that came from their earlier work uh, from Crash Bandicoot. A lot of inspiration, let's just say that, because obviously the biggest inspiration was Indiana Jones uh, for that game. Okay, so. I'm thinking, is this the boss? Hopefully. Okay, probably not. I think it's after this one. You know, as much as, uh, you know, I love how graphics have really improved over the years, it always comes back down to the game, you know, and the gameplay right here, and the way it was designed early on, it was done really well. And so that type of stuff, it, it's timeless, you know. And that's a mark of great game design. So no matter what era that you're playing this is, um, it's still pretty much the same game at its core, which is awesome. Okay, I don't know what. Oh boy, these enemies they don't stand a chance for Crash Bandicoot. I got like seven free lives. Okay. Okay, I don't. Okay, I gotta do that. Man, for some reason I was never really good at this uh, side-scrolling level, even though I've had played a lot of side-scrollers. It's just something about going from this pseudo 3D to side-scrolling kind of throws you off when you're playing this because normally you have one type of uh, perspective when you're playing these type of games. And, you know, at the time that this came out, you know, 3D games were still not something that was... Uh, normal you know uh, the PlayStation 
was really the game system that started ushering in real 3D. Uh, Sega Saturn kind of did, but the Sega Saturn wasn't really a 3D powerhouse. It was a more, oh wow. I, I got, I kept, wow, that's crazy. I got taken out by one hit. Yeah, so it was more of a polygon pushing machine than the Sega Saturn. Sega Saturn was kind of behind the times, you know, they, they predicted wrong where the game industry is going to be. And so they were still stuck in the whole uh, 2D, uh, 2D world, which is great for like shooters and, you know, side scrollers and so forth, but not great for where the industry was heading. And so that's why uh, Sega had to put in a lot of these additional chips, which made for a very badly designed uh, system. And it was hard to develop for because it was just thrown in together in a lot of ways. Whoa, man, these levels are still pretty, pretty challenging to me, you know? Okay, so if I get one more, nope. all right. Bonus, I think, bonus stage? Nope, <laughs> that was it. <laughs> Man, I, I probably missed something. <laughs> I never realized those boxes were falling on like that. <laughs> uh, he takes a lot of abuse. Okay, so this has to be the boss, I'm pretty sure. And the first one I think is this, so. Nope, I'm not at the boss yet, all right. So maybe this will be the last level that I play, because uh, it's taking a little longer than I remembered or maybe because when I was younger I just didn't care I just want to keep playing this so okay wow so this is the Indiana Jones scene man this looks incredible okay and this made it really hard because you couldn't really see uh, what was coming in front of you so you had to get ready for those jumps wow it's kind of like platforming taken to the 3D level. Oh, got to keep moving. Keep moving, Crash. Great game design. Great game design. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, man. I thought it was over, but it wasn't. So, wow. Platforming to another level right here to 3D level. Oh, wow. That. Oh, no. Okay, all right, I think I made it. Nope, I did Okay, so that is it for this episode. Uh, I just wanted to relive some good memories um, of a game that is a classic, but redone for our modern age. And so if you actually had any thoughts on Crash Bandicoot or any other old remakes that you remember playing, uh, be sure to leave that in the comments area below. And if you did uh, want to see more of my gaming videos, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell and as always if you get value out of these videos be sure to share like and subscribe